In this video, we're going to cover three terms, all of them straightforward. The first is the linear combination. And a linear combination is just the sum of two vectors that have been scaled by numbers. So let's say we have two vectors a and b. If we scale a by the number a and we scale b by the number b and we add the two resulting vectors together, this is a linear combination of the two starting vectors a and b. Now a linear combination isn't restricted to just two vectors. You can have a linear combination of an arbitrary number of vectors. Second term is linear dependence and this is a term that applies to a group of vectors. So let's say we have three vectors a, B, and C. These vectors are said to be linearly dependent if some vector in the group can be expressed as a linear combination of other vectors in the group. So for example, if we can scale A by the number A and add that to B scaled by the number B and the resulting vector is vector C, in this case since C can be expressed as a linear combination of A and B, these three vectors are linearly dependent. And the final term is linear independence, and this is just the opposite of linear dependence. If a set of vectors isn't linearly dependent, then we say it's linearly independent. So this means that there's no vector in the group that can be expressed as a linear combination of the other vectors in the group. And those are the three terms. Now I just want to go over some examples of these using the plane. So in the plane we have two main vectors. One which we'll call x that points in the horizontal direction and one that we'll call y that points in the vertical direction. And any other vector in the plane can be expressed as a linear combination of these two vectors. That's how the plane is defined. So let me define a new vector that's going to be the sum of the x and y vector. And I'll call this xy. By the way, anytime you see this equal sign with an extra dash, that's just a notation that means I'm making a definition. So I'm declaring that the right and left hand sides of this equation are equal. That's how the vector xy is being defined here. So let's look at groups of these three vectors and see which ones are linearly independent and which ones are linearly dependent. So first off, let's look at the vectors x and y. These are going to be linearly independent. So if we take any vector in this group and try to express it as a linear combination of the other vectors in the group, we only have one other vector to work with. So a linear combination here just means multiplying that other vector by some number. And we can't multiply x by some number to get y, and we can't multiply y by some number to get x. So these two vectors are linearly independent. Similarly for x and xy, there's no number you can multiply x by to get any vertical component. And xy has a component in the vertical direction. So these two vectors are linearly independent. Again, if we look at xy and y, these are also going to be linearly independent because there's no way to scale either one to get the other. So anytime we're dealing with two vectors and we want to know whether or not they're linearly independent, we just need to see if one is a scalar multiple of the other. Now that we've gone over some examples containing two vectors, let's look at examples containing three vectors. So consider the group consisting of the vectors x, y, and x, y. So we already said x and y are linearly independent because they aren't scalar multiples of each other. And same goes for any two vectors in this group of three. They're all linearly independent. But when we take the three together, these vectors are linearly dependent 
by definition actually. We define the vector x, y to be a linear combination of the vectors x and y. So automatically we know this vector can be expressed as a linear combination of two others in the group. So these three aren't linearly independent, they are linearly dependent. So it's pretty easy to see how x, y can be expressed as a linear combination of x and y. But it turns out that you can also express x as a linear combination of y and x, y, and you can express y as a linear combination of x and x, y. To see how, let's start again with the definition of x, y. x, y is vector x plus vector y. And so we can find out what y is in terms of x, y, and x just by subtracting x. So vector y is the same thing as x, y minus x. And don't be too alarmed that we're using subtraction here. And in the last video, I said there are only two operations on vectors, addition and multiplication by number. By subtraction, we really just mean addition of a vector multiplied by negative one. So if we have vector A minus vector B, that's just shorthand for vector A plus vector B multiplied by negative one. So there really are only two operations. This is just a convenient way to express this common linear combination. So we know that we can reach any vector in the plane by taking linear combinations of the vectors x and y. And the last example hints that we might be able to reach any vector in the plane by taking linear combinations of, say, the vectors x and xy. And I want to show you that this is indeed true. So let's consider an arbitrary vector v. So since v is in the plane, we can write it as a linear combination of the vectors x and y. So let's say it's going to be the number x times the vector x plus the number y times the vector y. You can think of these numbers x and y as being the coordinates of v in the plane. Now we're going to try to rewrite v as a linear combination of the vectors x and xy. So since we're still using one of the same vectors, namely x, we can start off by multiplying the vector x by the number x. So we have that component. And then we know that the y component of v is going to need to come from this vector x, y. So let's scale x, y by the number y. And now we have the correct y component, but now the x component is too large by y, so we'll have to subtract off that additional y, that scaling x, y by y put in. And that's all we need to do. So now we can see that the vector v can be expressed as x minus y times the vector x plus y times the vector x, y. So let me remind you that v was an arbitrary vector and we can write it as a linear combination of the vectors x and x, y. So any vector in the plane can be expressed as a linear combination both of the vectors x and y, but also as a combination of the vectors x and x, y. So the three vectors x, y, and v are linearly dependent because v is a linear combination of the vectors x and y. And we just showed that x, x, y, and v are also a linearly dependent group of vectors because v can also be expressed as a linear combination of x and x, y. So it would seem like any time we have three or more vectors in the plane, they're going to be linearly dependent. Either because one of the vectors is a scalar multiple of one of the others, like for example with the case of having the vector x and the vector x multiplied by two. Or if this isn't the case, then we can take these two vectors that aren't scalar multiples of each other, like x and x, y, and reach any other vector in the plane. So this result that we've arrived at informally is that at most two vectors in the plane can be linearly independent.